Hey everyone, this is Kevin from the chesswebsite.com. Today we're going to be going over one of my favorite parts in chess, very aggressive openings. So sit back, relax, and enjoy my list of the top seven chess aggressive openings. Number seven on the list, we have the Danish Gambit, one of the more common openings that you'll see. Pawn e4, pawn e5, and white just starts giving up material as fast as possible, starting with pawn to d4. After it takes, the pawn is just going to come up here to c3, allowing his opponent to continue to take that material. Again, his opponent doesn't have to, but the intent would be for his opponent to take. Bishop here to c4, not even worrying if black takes more material. If black does continue to take, bishop here to b2, all of a sudden white is down, two pawns in material, but as you can see he has a very aggressive setup. Both of his bishops are both eyeing down on this king side. Black has none of his pieces involved into the game. White has a fairly open lane for his queen to get involved. Both sides of the board in the middle very easily. He can get his knights very easily involved. Castle queen side or king side, depending on if he needs some safety or if he wants to be very aggressive. So Danish Gambit, definitely one of the openings that you'll get a lot of opportunities to play. So definitely makes my list of the best chess aggressive openings. Number six on our list is the Cochrane Gambit. Definitely one of my favorites. After pawn to e4... Pawn e5, knight here to f3, pretty common moves from both sides. If black tries the Petrov defense, which is not the most common, but you do see it every now and then, white's usually going to respond with knight to e5, followed by pawn to d6, kicking this knight back. The knight usually comes back here to f3, and then we see the knight take here on e4, and things continue. Uh, but this is kind of boring. And I like aggressive openings. So instead of white moving his knight back in the Cochrane game, he's actually going to play knight to f7. Now he's going to be giving up his knights early on. Now black pretty much needs to take this material or he's going to lose his queen or his rook, uh, which seems extremely bad. Uh, so he needs to take this, but this is going to be completely fine. This is what white wants in this position position he's given up a knight and material and in exchange he has two pawns and his opponent's king is wide open and white can pretty much attack it the rest of the game so there's a separate video on that uh, so i won't go into it but definitely a fun fun aggressive opening The next aggressive opening to make our list is the Scotch Gambit. Starts out with pawn 2e4, pawn e5. I love pawn e4 openings. Knight 2f3, knight c6, and then pawn 2d4. This is the Scotch game. The Scotch game is typically pretty slow, pretty boring. And so someone came up with the Scotch Gambit, uh, which makes it all the more interesting. So after the pawn takes here on d4, white's going to forego taking this material here on d4. You know, you could see an exchange of the knight and the knights here. But instead, white's going to play bishop here to c4, and he's going to have a very, very strong attack that he's going to start. So again, the Scotch Gambit, if you're definitely looking for a way to kind of spice up the Scotch game, this is definitely your opening. The next aggressive opening to make our list, you guessed it, it is the King's Gambit, my favorite personal opening to play. Uh, pawn to e4, pawn e5, and then pawn to f4, giving up material. If you haven't played this before, it, it's definitely great for not only beginners, but those people who have been playing for a long time. Uh, after the pawn takes here on f4... Uh, Usually knight to f3. Uh, this is kind of the way I play. You can play bishop here to c4 if you want to, but so many fantastic lines uh, that I actually want to go over one of my favorites because it's also extremely aggressive. And so I'll keep it with the king's gambit, and that is the Muzio gambit. And so you, your opponent won't always play into this, but if they play pawn to g5, the typical way for king's gambit would be to play pawn to h4, and then when they push down, you play your knight to g5. Uh, and then you look to get your bishop involved, but this pawn right here is kind of allowing for an outpost on g5. The Muzio Gambit just doesn't really care about all that. It's always trying to get more pieces involved into the action, so it plays bishop here to c4. The pawn's going to push forward, attacking this knight. 
White doesn't care. White's just going to castle on the king side and pretty much give up that material. So after the pawn takes, the queen takes right here. And all of a sudden, if you look at this setup, the, the king side's kind of weakened for black. He has no pieces really involved into the action except this lowly pawn here on f4. All of a sudden, from white's perspective, he's castled. He's got his queen involved. He's got his bishop involved. Things are going to be very, very difficult for black to kind of hold on to all the aggression that white has. So uh, not only is the king's gambit it pretty fun and aggressive, but the Muzio Gambit takes it to a whole nother level. The next aggressive opening we're going to be looking at is the Halloween Gambit. It is extremely risky, but it is so much fun to play. Starts out with pawn to e4. If, if people are curious why e4 is a pretty common occurrence, uh, it's, this opens up the door for the light square bishop to get the queen involved into the game. Usually e4 is a much more aggressive opening, so that's why a lot of the openings have e4 in it. But pawn to e5, and then we have kind of the four knights game, so knight to c3, or uh, after knight to c6, then we have knight to f3. And the Halloween's gambit is knight taking here on e5, which seems a little crazy, and it is, which is why it makes the video. Uh, knight taking here on e5, the pawn's going to push forward to a d4. If the knight comes back here to c6, we kind of just push forward again. We can kind of force it to come back here. So very aggressive, just continuously pushing, forcing black to really just move his knights across the board. He could try another knight move, but all in all, white's just going to be pushing forward with his pawns, trying to control the center, get his bishop involved. His queen has some support right here. Definitely a fun opening, and although white's down in material, many times if black doesn't play perfectly, white can get that back. So definitely a fun opening, but very risky as well. The next aggressive opening we're going to be looking at is our only opening from Black's perspective, and it is the Latvian Gambit. I've been playing it more and more just because it's so much fun to see your opponent's face when you play it. They really think you have no clue what you're doing, and it's really fun to play. So pawn to e4, uh, pawn e5, pretty common. Knight to f3, which you're going to see all the time. So you're going to have many, many opportunities to actually play the Latvian Gambit, and then you're going to play pawn to f5. Pretty crazy opening. There's a lot of different ways that white can respond to this, especially if they've never seen it. They may try something super crazy. Uh, so that's why there's another video specifically about that. But the Latvian Gambit is extremely aggressive, opening up the king side over here. Uh, there's a lot of different ways to bring the bishop here to c5 and actually give up material, even the rook or the queen if you want to, and just go ahead and attack this square here on f2. So a lot of different ways you can do this. But no matter how you slice it, the Latvian Gambit is definitely one of the best aggressive openings. Rounding out our list of best aggressive openings is the fried liver attack. It's just so much fun. I had to include it on the list. Pawn to e4, pawn e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop here to c4. Gotta love the light square bishop in an aggressive opening. Knight to f6, all very, very common moves. White has many different ways he could play. He could play pretty passive with... King castling on the king side, he could play pawn pushing forward, knight to c3. These are all fine, but these are all boring. And that's why we play the fried liver attack, and that's with knight here to g5, getting ready to play knight taking here on f7. Uh, could also, if you really wanted to, play bishop here on f7. But all in all, white's looking to exchange material off the board, a lot of material, get that king here to f7, go ahead and get that queen involved into the game, attacking if he needs to, and just chase this king all over the board. If you haven't played it, I definitely recommend it. If you haven't watched the video, also recommend watching that. There's a lot more to this. So many different lines that both sides can go to. Uh, but all in all, it is a fantastic opening and definitely makes the top of the best chess aggressive lines uh, that I have. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any more requests uh, for top video openings or anything else you'd like to see, let me know. If you have some other aggressive openings that I didn't include in this list, Feel free to leave a comment. Let me know. I'm always looking for some great aggressive openings in chess. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.